do and partake of this type of action. Why? It doesn't even seem conceivable that anyone who would take an automatic into buildings for the sole purpose of killing people could possibly be of sound mind. And I'll talk about that later. My other question, if some mental illness leads to violence, and not just slapping someone's face, which is bad enough, does all violence stem from mental illness? I suspect not. What makes a person shoot his grandmother in the face? Psychologists, and I did some research, have mostly come down on answering these questions in that mass shooters are not mostly mentally ill. This person named Gary Brucato, he's um, at Columbia University's Department of Psychiatry in New York City. They wanted to gain some insight, and so they created a mass murder database of 14,785 murders publicly described in English and print or online, occurring worldwide between 1900 and 2019. I just want to say that number again, 14,785. And that does not even talk about 2020, 2021, and the beginning of this year. They discovered that only 11% of all mass murderers including shooters, and only 8% of mass shooters had a serious mental illness. Now, they found that in the United States, the country in which we live, mass shooters were more likely to have legal histories, use recreational drugs, abuse alcohol, and have histories of non-psychotic psychiatric and neurologic symptoms. Okay, so now, what the difference is between that, I'm not gonna spend a long time on psychiatry in here. They, uh, um, they found also that people who are mass shooters in the United States who have any psychiatric and neurologic condition were more likely to use semi-automatics. They also found that since 1970, the rate of mass shootings has been far higher than the rate of non-firearm mass murder, which is the opposite of what happened before 1970. So that's one thing. And some other questions here from another researcher. His name is Jonathan Metzl, a, a MD and PhD. Um, and uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Pimonte, um have put this study today, and that's from 1921. They found that between, just between 2000 and 2013 that the FBI discovered 25% of shooters were known to be diagnosed with a mental illness, 25%. That's not insignificant, but it is not 75%, nor is it 100%. But the science remains complex, and not everyone agrees with that. I only found one study online, but I, it, I don't have a PhD in this, so I don't know everything. But this one person says, and this should be an avenue of research, how do the following problems contribute to mass murders? And they don't know because they haven't researched that. Stressful economic circumstances, the level of social disadvantage, maladaptive personality development in response to early life trauma, domestic violence exposure, 
a grieved resentment and smoldering anger against individuals or groups perceived to be hostile and threatening. And male gender and aberrant constructions of masculinity. And last of all, enhanced by substance abuse. And then, of course, here in the United States, the easy access to semi-automatic weapons. And how many of us could have almost put this list together? We didn't need a doctorate and his MA student to tell us that. We do know that not everyone exposed to one or all of those above becomes a mass shooter. We don't know. So the bottom line is that it's complex and not fully studied. Question number one, and I'm sure you've thought of this, other people in other countries probably have all of the same, at some point, some of those issues. Every country. What's the difference, of course? The access to semi-automatic weapons. Here's a, a point that I don't remember from 1994. Bill Clinton banned assault weapons in 1994. That the Republican Congress let that ban expire in 2004. That was George W. Bush, just in case you don't remember. Under Bill, after Bill Clinton's um, banning assault weapons, deaths dropped by 43%. After 2004, when the ban expired, they shot up by 239%. 239%. For assault weapons, and that does not even talk about every other gun that exists in this country. There's a poem that floats around the internet, and I have seen it on and off over the past several years. I think it was written in 2020. It's called, America is a Gun. England is a cup of tea. France, a wheel of ripened brie. Greece, a short, squat olive tree. America is a gun. Brazil is a football on the sand. Argentina, Maradona's hand. Germany, an oompa band. America is a gun. Holland is a wooden shoe. Hungary, a goulash stew. Australia, a kangaroo. America is a gun. Japan is a thermal spring. Scotland is a highland fling. Oh, better to be anything than America as a gun. I have found that poem devastating every time I read it. And yet, it's hard to disagree with it. Gun culture in some parts of this country is rampant. And somehow the NRA and other lobbyists have managed to get senator, senators to block any piece of legislation that can even slow this down. They have to be banned. I don't know any other solution than banning them. And yet, we seem to be stuck in a sand, put, sand pit that keeps us and this country sinking down. And why? We can tell you. You know, it's this group of people or this group of people. But why? 
because there's no real answer to it on this objective level. I think the only answer, and it is one that doesn't help reach a solution, is that we know that we are all sinners. Some of us do not try at all to walk the journey of God in love. And I have called some of American culture these days, narcissism run rampant. It's all about me and my feelings and what I hate and what I dislike and let's protect who I love and who cares about anything else. And never mind the social constructs I listed before. A horrible economy, social disadvantage that is poverty that is so bad and no way out of it trauma in one's early life, anger and hate against individuals or groups, and a really aberrant construction of masculinity that in this American culture, it's called a cowboy, the cowboy culture that gives a man in one hand and a gun and in the other hand a rifle and he is supposed to be able to do what he wants and defend who he cares about only. And in the image of this culture developed in the 19th and 20th, in the 20th century, it is always a straight white male. Because I don't know if you know that, one third of all cowboys were people of color. Have you ever seen that, except very recently in any movie, any TV program? The further this goes along, we have to remedy these social issues. because even some in combination with each other leads to hate. We have to do this. And it is not easy. I am not going to tell you that I know exactly we should do it. One th step through 10, and then the world will be a better place, because I don't have that solution. There, all I know is it is the call of the God of love to do this. Whatever we can do, with, with whatever ability we have, from writing postcards to doing, signing up to do text messaging for certain political campaigns to marching on Washington to praying, because I'm not leaving out praying, believe me. But it is not the only solution. We have to act. I want to go back to that adaptation of Amos that I read. I hate, I despise your vigils, and I take no delight in your school shooter drills. Even though you offer me your thoughts and prayers, I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your collection plates I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your lament. I will not listen to the melody of your tears, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. I'll say it again but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And this has to begin with us. Amen. Amen. And now, in the words of the Nicene Creed, 
we believe in one God, 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 the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he's worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the mighty acts of God who has delivered his people from sin and death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us lift our voices and pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks to God for the multitude of blessings he showers upon us, for our lives and for those whom we love, for the beauty of this home God has created for us, for our families and our friendships. Let us give thanks to the God of life. We pray this month for the worship committees, part one, Alter Guild, Bulletin Assembly Ministry, Ushers and Greeters, Welcomers, Worship Team. We pray in this month of May, which is Asian Pacific and Jewish American Heritage Month. We pray for Matthew Jean Batiste and Ari Calhoun, who will be baptized on June 5th. Is there anyone who celebrated a birthday this part week or will be in the coming week? Birthdays, anyone? Any other? Yes, good morning. This is Barbara Williams. My son, Neil, will be celebrating his 44th birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Anyone celebrating an anniversary you would like to share with us? Anniversaries, anyone? We'll skip the anniversary prayer. Risen Lord, let us pray for the church that it may carry forward the redemptive works of God for our clergy and our bishops, 
for the many lay people who serve the church and serve the world through the church, for those gather here in worship and prayer. Risen Lord, let us pray for the newly baptized, that the joy of Easter may ever grow within them, and that the Spirit may guide them in lives of active faith. Risen Lord, let us pray for the nations and peoples of the world, that the powers that oppress and destroy may decline, and that justice, peace, and prosperity be lifted up. For Ukraine, Ethiopia, and other war-torn areas in the world, for Finland and Sweden for their defense of freedom. Risen Lord, let us pray for those who are sick, those who suffer, those who struggle, and those who have died. For the Farrell family in their recent loss, Bob, Vincent Cole, who passed away recently, Nancy, Saul and Susan, Mary Mead, Alison Clark, Janice Jones, Abiose Green. We this, is Val. this is Val. I ask you to pray for me as I will be going to the hospital on Thursday for a procedure. <clears throat> We now pray for the 21 people killed at the shooting in the Uvalde Elementary School in Texas. Eva Morales, Irma Garcia, Uzziah Garcia, Makenya Elrod, Jose Flores Jr., Rogelia Torres, Xavier Lopez, Amery Joe Garza, Annabel Guadalupe Rodriguez, Elijah Cruz Torres, Eliana Garcia, JC Carmela Luevanos, Jalaya Nicole Silguero, Tess Mata, Alexandria Anilla Rubio, Jackie Cazares, Navaje Brajo, Leila Salazar, Alifia Ramirez, Meite Yolana Rodriguez, Miranda Mathis. We pray for the 10 people who were killed in the Buffalo, New York shooting. Roberta A. Drury, Margus D. Morrison, Andre McNeil, Aaron Salter, Geraldine Talley, Celestine Cheney, Hayward Patterson, Catherine Massey, Pearl Young, Ruth Whitfield. We also pray for Dr. John Cheng, who was killed in the Presbyterian Church shooting. In the hope born of Easter, give them peace acceptance and renewal, and may they, through their struggles, come into closer communion, communion with the God who redeems and restores. Risen Lord. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, are there any travelers this week? Safe travel. Anyone else traveling this week? Mm -hmm. 
those people at home, anybody traveling this week. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, in particular all these gathered here and those who travel with them. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us conclude our prayers by praying together. O God, o God whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Morning, all. Peace and blessings. God's peace. Morning, everyone. Peace be with you. Also with you. Peace be with you. Morning, God. Peace to everyone. Barbara is your son. What was that? Did you say something, Carol? Uh, Barbara, I wondered if her son was going to be home for his birthday. Yeah, it's Jen. You're a little muffled. I don't know what you say. I could hear you, but you're muffled. How are you both? Good to see your faces. We're uh, recovering from COVID. You're breaking up. We can't. Oh, still, oh, okay. You guys are still quarantining. You guys are still quarantining. I, I'm remembering. Okay. You feeling okay? Just one quick announcement right now about a communion, and that is I, I, just because we do have some, you know, every week someone who has not necessarily been here, that we have two stations. One, if you come to me, you can either receive bread on your own in the typical way, but if you want to intinct, I need to intinct for you, and I can't do it unless you do not touch the host first. Sometimes I uh, give people a second host. So let me uh, intink for you. And then on the right hand side will be a cup if you want to drink from the chalice. So thank you. And 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in suffering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our to give God thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. The Spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away, and yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you called us to live into the fullness of your love. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, 
and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. deliver us from the power of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your grace, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet he, we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he had gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gather it at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Andrew and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite ourselves entirely from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like more, you who have been to this sacrament often and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. There's not any new announcements in this that hasn't been here for the last few weeks. Um, first of all, the new the purpose statement as uh, developed finally by the communications committee and then the vestry who uh, agreed to it said is growing faith nourished by a diverse community engaged in outreach. I just wanted to say that. Next week, it's a big day. It is the Feast of Pentecost, one of the larger feasts in the church. Also, we have two baptisms, and on top of that, finally, the confirmation class of 2020 will be presented this congress uh, to this congregation and given their confirmation and reception certificates. Two years late, but here we are. Now, oh, there is a new one. Um, the diocese, along with, um, I don't even remember what the, the anachronism is. It's about justice ministries in both dioceses, New Newark and New Jersey. Um, there is going to be a march, Saturday, June 11th. And it, if you want to go, you need to register. Um, tickets for the bus are $20, the information's there. You need to be at Christ Church in Short Hills at 6 a.m. and scheduled to come back at about 8 in the evening. So if this is something you can do, I would greatly encourage it. Okay? Uh, on the 12th, it will be a town hall meeting uh, immediately after the service here in the church before we go downstairs on the roles and re responsibilities of the vestry, wardens, and priests in the church. And um, we are getting closer for the memorial garden, so if you know anybody who's cremains, because we're going to be getting bricks etched soon, or have been sprinkled into the outside, please let us know. Um, um, and we'll settle on a date, probably even this week, when we're going to do all of this. And don't forget, on um, we're also, also honoring of Kathy and Phil for lifetime achievement. And then if you can, turn into the Diocesan YouTube channel at 3 p.m. to participate via YouTube. Um, and I think that is it right now. Thank you. Good morning, um, church. Um, thank you for joining us in celebrating the 56th Independence Anniversary of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana as we celebrate our independence from our, colonial, our former colonial power, Great Britain. Today we have, we're going to sing a hymn for Guyana's children, one of our national songs, followed by a brief presentation giving some insights into Guyana, wh who, what Guyana is, the people, a little bit of the culture. Then we'll sing the national anthem. Following the blessing, the, we will proceed downstairs where we intend to introduce you to a taste of Guyana's cuisine and some of the local spirits also. So, together with some, a little bit of entertainment. So, Sandra, could you please hit the lights? And Kelly is going to put the the hymn first, um, it is to the back of your bulletin. This, the words for the hymn is to the back of your bulletin. So I'm asking if you can join us in singing as we celebrate um, Diana Independence. Thank you.
Hansons are hitting the road. And wherever they go, they'll be about 10 minutes from a hotel by window. With over... Diana is home to nine distinct indigenous peoples. The Mokono or the Iowa, the Akawai or the Kapon, the Arikuno also known as the Pimon, the Makusi, Warao, Wapisiana, Waiwai, Patamona, and Kalina also known as the Carib. The Warao people were the indigenous inhabitants of Diana. <laughs> Dutch, English, and French established colonies in what is now known as Guyana. But by the early 17th century, the majority of the settlements were Dutch, which became British Guiana in 1831. Guiana comes from the indigenous people's language, meaning land of many waters. Guyana's populace is mainly of colonial origin, although Indians are scattered throughout the forested interior. The numerous coastal peoples are chiefly descendants of slaves from Africa and indentured workers from India who were originally transported to work the coastal sugarcane plantations. It was governed as British Guiana with a mostly plantation style economy until the 1950s. Guyana gained independence in 1966 from Great Britain and officially became a republic within the Commonwealth of Nations in 1970, shedding all vestiges of its colonial past. 
The legacy of British rule is reflected in the country's political administration and diverse population, which includes Indian, African, Amerindian, Chinese, Portuguese, or the European, and various multiracial groups. Guyana is the only South American nation in which English is the official language. The main economic activities in Guyana are agriculture, which are rice and sugar, mining for gold and bauxite, and other minerals, timber, shrimp, fishing, and others. Recovery of major crude oil reserves of the Atlantic coast has since made a large impact on Guyana's GDP. Since drilling began in 2019, projected to produce 250,000 barrels of oil per day. Preservation of Guyana's pristine forests has been a key component of receiving international aid through the RED program. The politics of Guyana takes place in a framework of a presidential representative democratic republic in which the president of Guyana is both head of state and government and of a multi-party system. Executive power is exercised by the president and government. Legislative power is vested in both the president and National Assembly of Guyana. Guyana's culture is very similar to that of the English-speaking Caribbean and has historically been tied to the English-speaking Caribbean as part of the British Empire when it became a possession in the 19th century. Guyanese culture developed as forced and voluntary immigrants adopted and converged with the dominant British culture. Slavery eradicated much of the distinction between differing African cultures, encouraging the adoption of Christianity and the values of British colonists, which laid the foundations of today's Afro-Guyanese culture. Arriving later and under somewhat more favorable circumstances, Indian immigrants were subjected to less assimilation preserving more aspects of Indian culture. Guyana's geographical location is sparsely populated rainforest regions and its substantial Amerindian population differentiates it from English-speaking Caribbean countries. Its blend of Indo-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese culture gives it similarities to Trinidad and distinguishes it from other parts of the Americas. Guyana shares similar interests with the islands in the West Indies, such as food, festive events, music, sports, etc. Guyana's natural habitat and its preserved environment gives a genuine experience with nature. Two of Guyana's main attractions are the Kaichur Falls and Mount Gorimer. Kaichur Falls is the world's largest single drop waterfall and is one of Guyana's most scenic treasures. Mist rises to the top to create a cloud forest that's home to a diverse biohabitat. An absence of guardrails makes the view more, even more breathtaking. Mount Roraima is located at the junction of Venezuela, Brazil, and Guyana. A characteristic large flat top mountain surrounded by cliffs 400 to 1000 meters high. The highest point of Mount Roraima is located on the southern edge of the cliffs at an altitude of 2810 meters. Guyana is a beautiful land that exemplifies God's creation of nature and a warm and friendly people. Guyana distinct indigenous peoples, the Lucano or the Arawak, the
That was beautiful. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 